Hello, welcome back to the Agostino Zinga show with I, your host, Agostino Zinga, and this is episode number 549, 549 of the Agostino Zinga show with I, your host, Agostino Zinga. I hope you're doing well wherever this podcast may find you, wherever it may find you, I hope you're doing brilliant, okay? Brilliant. As you can tell, I'm doing fine. I've got my gains in. See what the biceps are saying there. If you're viewing this via the video camera, you shall see. You or you are seeing. If you are listening to it via the audio podcast, you need to check out the audio so you can see what these biceps are saying. It's a gun show. It's a gun show. <laughs> but yeah, apart from that, I'm doing splendid, nice and well. My phone is 70% charged. I'm feeling good talking to you directly and I hope you're going to enjoy the show that we have jam-packed and ready to roll, okay? Ready to roll. Let's just jump right into it. Let's forget all the little dilly dally jump right into it. So, I missed out on this story. I did. I don't remember why I didn't cover it beforehand, but this story kind of um, went all viral of the internet about six or seven days ago. One of the mods from the anti-work subreddit decided to go on Fox News of all places and basically plead his case and kind of lay forth as to why this subreddit had, I think at the time was one of the largest growing subreddits on Reddit itself. If you're wondering, Agassino, what is the anti-work subreddit? The anti-work subreddit was a little community of people who during the you know, maybe the entirety of the pandemic had decided that regular work were, you know, especially when it comes to menial jobs, such as working in the service industry or hospitality, were not worth um, the hassle. They were not, yeah, they weren't worth the hassle. And there might have been something else out there they, they could be doing with their time. And of course, in America, with the stimulus checks coming in, people's eyes were opened as to what exactly they could be doing day to day. And it also maybe asked them to really, you know, it maybe put them in a position where they asked themselves some interesting questions as to what is is work for me what do how much do i need to sustain myself why am i putting myself at risk especially with the pandemic going on it made people ask themselves loads of interesting questions which for the most part we've been a little bit privileged to have that position in europe where for the most part most countries in the eu especially countries like myself or countries like england where i live even though we're at the eu at the moment we have the ability to um if you fall on hard times draw from stuff like universal credit you know and be able to kind of live off the government especially if you've worked for a you know a long period of time in your career and you're able to kind of have some sort of benefits in that regard but americans this was all new to them to be able to sit at home and be able to be sent a check for a couple of thousand pounds maybe fourteen thousand, to cover your basic needs cover your rent um it basically made people open their eyes and see that maybe you don't need that much to survive and if you have the ability to kind of pull some funds from the government it might end up opening up your free time to do the things that you actually want to do and for me personally i Anti-work was something that I kind of stumbled upon when I read the four-hour work week. I think that might have been the first iteration or first kind of presentation of the anti-work movement, the kind of um, best-selling book from Tim Ferriss. And I think that book gets a bad rap. A lot of people say it's essentially anti-work. It essentially makes people believe that they can go and start up a business selling books on Amazon, not have to work, and just work from a laptop four hours a day and for the rest of the time be sipping on coconuts on the beach somewhere. But I think the idea about it was more so to enable you to have a muse which that's what basically has stayed the book in terms of small business that would allow you to have more free time to do the things that you actually want to do in your spare time not to just lay down and be dormant or sedentary it was actually to um, to open up your day so you're not just you know spending all your time at work and i think in a pre-pandemic world we all kind of knew that it was coming to a bit of a head like it was getting a little bit ridiculous even myself working in a sort of kind of middle level job it was getting ridiculous having to travel an hour to work staying back at you know staying at work maybe an hour or half an hour more because you need to finish up because you have so much to do then traveling an hour back to work again which essentially takes up maybe 10 hours a day you sleep eight and there's not much time left after that you know what i mean to kind of enjoy and do the things that you want to do and then when the weekends come around sometimes you're so tired from the monday to friday you don't have the energy even to do the things that you want to do on the weekend so we all kind of felt intrinsically whether we're working and in, in, a, in a restaurant or we're working in an office that this whole working thing just to keep the lights on wasn't the way to go about things and i think what the four hour work week did is that it kind of allowed people to kind of shift their mindset to think you don't need to start the next uber because if i remember as well that was at a time when everybody was pushing most of the gurus or the mentors out there or the kind of you know entrepreneurial folks were basically telling everybody that they could be the next mark zuckerberg you could be the next travis uh Kalanick. but no those guys are unicorns for a reason right the whole reason why we don't have a competitive or we don't have a reasonable twitter um competitor that can maybe um compete with them on open markets because no one's able to make something better than that product at the time or you know at the time of speaking 
So what Tim Ferriss did is it kind of unlocked people's head to be like, no, you don't need to have an actual crazy, I'm going to IPO business, right? In, in the billions and hundreds of billions, you can just have a business that's able to kind of cover your cost, cover your expenses, cover your rent, and then you can use the free time to do the things that you want to do. So obviously this community on, on Reddit was blowing up over the entire time of the pandemic because people were basically questioning what they were doing in their life. And it made complete sense that people were maybe looking at the things that they were prioritizing uh, pre-pandemic and thinking, no, when we live in a post-pandemic world, I want to kind of open up and do new things. I remember going to Nicaragua, um, this was maybe, I don't know when it was, 2017, 20, 2017, maybe late, uh, uh, later than that, maybe 2010. I don't know when it was. Long, long time ago, I went to Nicaragua to go visit a friend who was working out there doing some, you know, I think charity work, I'm pretty sure. I'm not really too sure. I think it was charity work. But anyway, I went to visit her and then I also went to do a little bit of quote unquote solo traveling, which was great. Um, she actually gave me the impetus. She kind of kicked me out the ass and basically left me alone for the week without telling me that she was going to leave me alone. And I was basically in the main city, um, Leon, just basically hanging out with, you know, with um backpackers and expats and whatnot and having the time of my life so that was really fun but i do remember bumping into a lot of people who were essentially working remotely and i didn't know that was a thing back then right i didn't know you could do customer service roles marketing roles um uh what you call it uh, product roles um you know content roles editorial roles just from the comfort of your laptop wherever you need to be in the world but the thing was when you try to probe and ask them hey how are you how did you get in this position none of them really went to spill the beans which makes sense if you've got that kind of job and you're able to kind of live in flipping nicaragua right you're not going to then you know be willing to be open as to why how you got that position and how you're able to do it especially at the age because you know we're all the same sort of age and you know you don't want it to be kind of overcrowded you don't want anybody to step on your toes you kind of like gatekeep it so i kind of got it but then as you go you know through life and you go through different jobs you have to realize oh okay either these people were very senior where you could basically negotiate what you wanted to do in your role because that's something people don't realize either when you're working in places if you're good at what you're doing and you're an asset and uh people value your contribution you can actually negotiate to have different perks in your job that other people can't whether it's a company card whether it's a company car whether it's um extended breaks or whether it's sabbaticals whatever it may be you can negotiate things in your contract or in the way that you work that would maybe you could then kind of propose and say hey if i have this it's going to allow me to be more productive when i'm at work people can do it all the time but it's something you kind of have to shift in your head in terms of thinking you deserve it or something that you can actually ask for especially if you're doing great work so it's either that people are really senior or they were in a position that allowed them to do more re remote working and i think a lot of people have basically woken up to the fact that you could do that nowadays especially with the prevalence of companies out there that need customer service representatives especially or customer service reps sorry who can work around the clock there's you know there's no limit of roles that you can do from the comfort of your laptop if you're willing to do the work if you're willing to dig if you're willing to look around but obviously there is some people within that group in that subset of anti-work who are just lazy they don't essentially they don't really want to work they'd rather just like sponge off the government and um, have no actual hobbies outside of working and just spend all their time on twitter and reddit shit posting that's what some most people want to do and i think not some people i say most people i think most people if you told them they could get away with living on the universal universal basic income ubi which is maybe a thousand to maybe 1500 pounds per month which just about maybe covers most of your expenses if you live sensibly and maybe on you know you add maybe a part-time job on top of that to kind of make up for other things that you want to do maybe like going on holiday buying a car you know going out to eat and whatnot i think most people would have it most people don't want the glitzy crazy life where you're like in the middle of cancun or you're doing whatever people just want to be able to just enjoy whatever their life they got by not having to be present at an office every single day or at, on a shop floor or at a restaurant or at a bar and if you gave them the excuse that they wouldn't have to work they would take it so anti-work is full of these guys and girls who clearly clearly are using the anti-work movement as a sort of um, shield to basically um remove themselves from having any responsibility whatsoever and this interview with fox news basically laid it bare where one of the mods decided to go on there and plead his case regarding anti-work movement and let's just say it did not go well i'm gonna play it now for you <laughs> hilarious it's like a good work day how many hours is is you know a solid work day in, in your ideal right. society uh Sure. I mean, I think as much as people want, I mean, I personally uh, work, I have, I have like a 20, 25 hour work weeks, which I think is fairly good. Um, so I would like less work hours. Um, and what I do you do, Doreen? Go, oh, I'm a dog walker. A dog walker. <laughs> okay. Yes. 25 hours uh, a week. Yeah. So how old are you, if you don't mind me asking? Sure. I'm 30. 
You're 30. Okay. <laughs> and is there something you want to do besides being a dog walker? Do you aspire to do anything more than dog walking? Or is that kind of your, your pinnacle? Uh, I, I love working with dogs. If I had to do this for the rest of my life, you know, I wouldn't be super complaining. You know, dogs are wonderful animals. Uh, but I I would love to teach. Uh, I would love to, um, you teach. know, uh, work, with, work with people and well, stuff like that. What would that. you yeah. teach, Dorian? Uh, a philosophy, mostly. Philosophy. Just introduction to philosophy, critical <laughs> thinking, reason, stuff like that. Okay. Well, I would love to take your class, Doreen. I would just be taking notes the whole time. And you know what? A professor is a very similar schedule than something that you're imagining. So I think that actually might, might work perfectly for you. Listen, uh, I think this might not be the greatest idea, but who am I to judge? To each their own, they say. It's a free country. Sure. Not everything's yeah. uh, free, you know. but it is a free <laughs> country. <laughs> Thank you so much. Sure. We've got to run. We got to pay the bills. Absolutely disaster of an interview, right? Absolutely disaster. And of course, you know, the usual rags come out and try and defend it. This is from The Guardian. Like a bully in the schoolyard, Fox News sets its sight on anti work movement. It's not a bully. The real world, most people are thinking the real world. Most people in the real world, if they were given the excuse where they didn't have to work, would take it. But I think most people do get some form of satisfaction out of working. Now, it's not the be all and end all. But it does provide some level of structure. It's like a scaff not scaffolding. Is that like a scaffolding? Maybe it is. Maybe it's a beam in a house. It's something that kind of allows you to maybe do the things that you want to do in and around it. Whether it's going out, whether it's staying in, looking after pets, hanging out with friends, going on holiday, whatever things that you like to do in your spare time, what kind of gives you structure to do it, right? Because uh, how fun would it be to actually watch Euphoria and kind of tap out from society for an hour every Sunday or every Monday morning or every Monday evening if you didn't have a work schedule? You actually got something to look forward to. You go to work in the morning thinking, oh, I'm going to download this. I'm going to torrent this. I've got this saved on my HBO Max, whatever. By the time you come back home or on the way to work, if you want, I see people some doing, some people doing it. You can watch the thing on your phone. It actually makes you look forward to your day. You're like, oh, I can't wait to sit down on the train, get my headphones on and watch this series. It's actually a good thing. It actually gives you a, a sense of balance. It allows you to have friends of your own age in a work environment that aren't people that you know from previous walks of life. That's also a good thing. Communication with people. Um, maybe the ability to maybe get promoted. It allows you to have little small goals, achievements you can make a, a, across the, across time. I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing, but it's obviously mostly corporations that are working people like, like dogs. They're flipping, killing you. They're raking you over the coals. They're pushing you to the extent where it doesn't really make any sense. And then people obviously push back and, you know, which makes complete sense, but not having any work whatsoever or working as a part-time dog walker 20, 25 hours a week and then taking you on less hours, that's absolutely insane. But yeah, you know, Guardians are always going to Guardian. Um, let's quickly read a little bit what they say here. They said in 2013, the Saturday anti-work was born. The unemployment for all, but not just for the rich, tags uh, reads the tagline. America was experiencing a mood and change at the time. Occupy, the movie had just hit theaters, lodging the eponymous movement in the national consciousness, the socialist alternative pie, blah, blah, blah. Born on the moment, sorry, uh, bandy, uh, sorry, anti-work offered a space where people could envision their life free from work or at least too much of it. Anchored by Marxist philosophy, people used it to commiserate, share memes and trade war stories about the horrors of modern day working in America. Then the pandemic hit, laying bare inequalities, in, in, so inequities long faced by lower wage workers, particularly in the United States. The subreddit exploded, screenshots of recognition texts to bosses went viral, eat my ass, read one memorable text in response to boss who had warned against such impulsive decisions. In December, users bombarded Kellogg's applications as site as they've been launched, they replaced to, as, as they launched to replace 1,400 striking users with fake applicants. As media reports in the great resignation in the wake of the Bureau of Labor Statistics, um, that 4.5 million Americans had left the job in November 2021 an all-time high and to work inch closer to the mainstream. Now, that stat is a bit skewed. It's not like those people are resigning. Most industries haven't recovered from the pandemic and they probably never will. So some industries just don't have the ability to hire people, right? They maybe can hire them on a temporary basis, maybe on like a uh on like a zero hour basis but there is no long-term prospects for people in jobs anymore especially if you're somebody working in entry level sometimes you're a medium uh yeah entry to medium level position it's not guaranteed you're gonna have that job forever you're just gonna have to work like i'm doing at the moment and just stack up and hope that it's gonna be able to kind of sustain you until whenever that you need to go and do other things 
But I think one of the good things to come off the back of it, I remember seeing loads of these posters from McDonald's and other fast food chains that kind of responded to the lack of applicants or lack of employees they had in their workforce because people were quitting because it wasn't worth it to go and work for McDonald's for eight dollars an hour if you were going to get a stimulus check. It just didn't make any sense, especially if you're going to go take that stimulus check and maybe go and buy a couple of TVs or a PlayStation and flip that. Why would you go work in McDonald's for eight pound an hour or eight dollars an hour? Cool, makes complete sense. But what they didn't well in terms of reaction is that they then decided to up the hourly rate which was crazy because what it told you was that they could have done it anyway but they chose not to because they didn't have a reason to right they didn't have any reason to put the hourly wage higher so they let you you know suffer on ten dollars and i remember one post i saw i think it went up to about 18 or 20 dollars per hour working at mcdonald's which is absolutely insane considering the level of work you're going to do and how um monotonous it is and how easy it is to give you 20 dollars an hour especially if you don't mind doing that kind of job it's pretty good work uh, of course you're gonna have to suffer from all the well star hip-hop moments and you know having the dregs of society walking in and out of your establishment but if you're able to keep your head down and just work there for a few months you can stack up a nice healthy amount of money make sure your cb has not got many big gaps of unemployment because of course that's not going to look good because i'd imagine even though it's a pandemic there'll be some companies out there some absolute horrible people who even though people are finding it hard to find jobs would actually um what's that word called would actually look down upon you if you had big gaps in your work experience even though they know your industry has suffered for you know greatly due to, due to the pandemic i'm pretty sure they exist um so you know if you're able to work in a supermarket work in a restaurant for the time being and kind of get your money up why not so it's actually been a i think it's actually been a net positive this kind of thing has happened but of course you know people like guardian are always going to fight for the um the right to be lazy and not do anything it makes complete sense when they're paying their editors like 40 grand a year to write flipping crazy dumb hit pieces on podcasts it doesn't make any sense and then vice came out also and said something um they said okay what the fuck is going on with the empty work subreddit and fox news ambush it wasn't an ambush it was just a terrible interview and again come are we allowed to say in society now can we not just say hey you did a bad job is that okay it's not you know we don't want to bully the kid we don't want him to like you know get depressed or do anything bad we're just going to say you did a terrible job you went on there to try and advocate for your subreddit to try and advocate for your community to try and present an alternative way to maybe look at work to look at employment and you got mocked because you are a joke you live in your mom's basement clearly at 30 years of age and you dog walk and you want to work less hours than 25 hours a week which i think some people said it wasn't 25 hours and then there's stories coming out about him being you know a little bit of a p-e-r-v which is absolutely you know right on the button there but come on you did a bad job you didn't represent yourself well it is what it is dust yourself off again and come again but people are so sensitive these days um a quarter said da, 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 the fox news thing fox um ford explained that people in anti-work movement still want to do things but they want to do things where they feel rewarded and in good spot in life and where the job respects them which is sounds like a participation trophy it sounds like everyone gets a star everyone gets a lollipop like nah the interview was typical a uh, fox news ambush uh ford made reasonable clear arguments no he didn't many members of anti-work want but what uh waters or waters invited her only to ridicule the note that's a her Oh, this person meant to be trans. Rotted. Okay. Cool, man. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. Um, but what has invited her only to include uh, the notion that anyone will be against working, um, not to have a sub, sorry, was that a substantive interview? She had wandered into a den of wolves and didn't realize anything bad was going to, uh, was happening even as she was beginning being eaten alive. To what has Ford was everything conservatives have been warning against the work lifters who are destroying America and want free things from the government. Yeah, but there, this is also an extreme. This, I, I guess, some people on the left, I would say I'm, I'm pretty left leaning i would say this person is an extreme and not the best advocate or the best ambassador or the best orator to describe anything that concerns anti-work they shouldn't be anywhere near a video camera at all they should be in the doldrums in the dungeon pit living in their mom's basement modding the anti-work subreddit not going on fox news and trying to um you know have a tit for tat with a very experienced um news anchor it's not going to work you're always going to make to look like a fool um, says so here, I encourage people to be lazy. What was asked? <laughs> I think laziness is a virtue in society where people want to be productive twenty four seven. Ford responded. Later, what has asked Ford, who said she is thirty years old, dog water, if she aspires to be anything more than a dog walking, or is that your pinnacle? When Ford mentioned that she'd like to teach philosophy, a field of study likened to the mythical underwater basket weaving that conservatives are endlessly memed as being expensive, useless, and without job prospect, Waters literally laughed. But it is. So it should be a joke. 
why should somebody who hasn't got their own life in order be teaching philosophy even though that should be maybe the perfect person for, for philosophy especially nowadays people just talk out their asses myself included but i'm not giving you advice i'm not trying to lead you anywhere or guide you to anything or ask you for funds to go on my course that's going to lead you to this now nah, but most people do do that so i understand that but it is a bit of a joke you can't have your own life not in order and then decide to take up philosophy for what reason who's listening to you what are you philosophizing about? Like, get out of here. That doesn't make any sense whatsoever. People should, you should be laughed and mocked that when you, you should be laughed and mocked when you do a bad job. You should be ridiculed and pointed at when you say something dumb. And the key to it is to learn from it and come back and be better. This idea that people should just pretend like you didn't say the dumb thing is ridiculous. It continues. The Fox News interview was an infection point. So inflection point of the anti-work subreddit, which went from a small community to one of the fastest growing subreddits and now a 1.7 billion members. Um, billion, million. Uh, predictably, these members have different views on what it means to be anti-work. Some of the subreddit want to be advocate for universal basic income, which I think is pretty spot on. Some rail against capitalism not get fan of that and some just hate hate their city hate, hate their shitty bosses um, most want to strengthen the organized labor movement and some just want to be paid decent wage and treated with respect i would go for universal basic income personally for me and have uh, a decent wage and be treated with some level of respect that should be no level of respect is obviously earned but then you obviously can't force it on people but i think if you're able to have pe give people some form of universal basic income maybe increase the hourly wage on some of these menial jobs it will make people put up with a lot because i've been in workplaces where you've hated the person you work for but because they pay you pretty decently you will put up with a lot of shit you really will but if you're paid pittance you're going to bounce to somewhere else that even if they pay you a pound extra or maybe it's an hour further out from where you're working it will give you the peace of mind and nothing nothing you can't put any value on that sort of stuff that like peace of mind you really can't it continues to say most viral posts on a subreddit over the last few months have been from workers who have told their bosses to fuck off people calling for solidarity during unionization efforts and strikes and people who have amounted sorry uh, automated their jobs and use their free time to pursue their hobbies or their post about worker exploitation it's funny that they're talking about worker exploitation on vice considering they flipping organized that festival in saudi arabia right they don't really have the best working conditions over there, innit? Imagine trying to spearhead an anti-work movement and flipping Saudi Arabia. What do you think MBS will say about that? But yeah, clearly the worst advocate ever when it comes to anti-work movement. Didn't do a good job at it, uh, at presenting it or articulating it in any sort of way. I still think it's a really um, interesting argument to have. I still think 4-Hour Workweek is probably the best model or idea around it. You can maybe build off of the back of that and use that as some sort of structure to basically frame how you approach the anti-work movement. But essentially, we're all doing it now at the moment, especially if you're working from home, especially if you have the ability to maybe travel into your office maybe twice per week or maybe once per week. That's essentially anti-work because it opens up your day, opens up your week to do the things that you actually want to do. But this idea that everyone wants to sit on their ass and just collect money from the government, that's insane. Some of us actually do um, get some level of satisfaction from being to, going to work, doing our task, being a useful member of a team, connecting with other team members, meeting customers, you know, whatever it may be, we get some satisfaction out of that. And I think you shouldn't be looked down upon as some sort of capitalist pig because you enjoy the place that you work at. That doesn't really make any sense for me. But, you know, what do I know? Then we have this story courtesy of what is it? Uh, let me get it up on here. Is it loading? Yep, there you go. We have the story courtesy of um a, what's that? A, AP AP News it says ABC suspends Whoopi Goldberg over Holocaust race remarks. And this is something coming from a Euro guy that I don't necessarily get. I'm not actually I don't really understand this whole anti-Semitism thing that exists in the US, especially from the black community towards Jewish people. It seems to be things that people don't tend to talk about too much. You seem to, you, especially in the peak of the pandemic, there's so many videos of random guys in New York beating up these Hasidic Jews as they're walking down the street and minding their own business that I just can't get my head wrapped around it because, you know, we have a few, we have a really strong Jewish community here in London, in like North London, around the Wood Green area and, you know, whatever. You just see them you just keep it moving there's no there's no kind of a uh, feeling of wanting to chase them down the street or pull their pigtails or kick them in the back you don't really care you just keep it moving but for whatever reason in the u.s they seem to have a very visceral reaction when it comes to talking about jews and maybe it's because they feel as if like jewish people take away the light from 
um, African Americans when it comes to slavery and when it comes to racism. They feel as if when you talk about Jewish people, it sometimes kind of diminishes the plight of the African American people, especially when they first came to America or they first were brought over to America on those slave ships. Maybe that's some of it, which is obviously ridiculous because essentially it's like um, oppression Olympics, right? My struggle is more important than your struggle. Yours is just white on white violence, whereas mine is black. What is it? Black on black violence? Because, you know, how did those flipping slaves get on those boats? you got to ask yourself those questions, isn't it? <laughs> but yeah, it's ABC suspends Whoopi Goldberg over Holocaust race remarks. It says the following. Yeah, Whoopi Goldberg was suspended for two weeks for Tuesday as co-host of The View because of what as head of ABC News called her wrong and hurtful comments. Just think what would happen again. The woman's absolutely batshit crazy. But just think what would have happened if Meghan McCain said anything anti-Semitic on that platform. Or I know they already hated her, but just imagine if somebody with a conservative tilt decided to say something anti-Semitic on The View, what their response would be like or what the outrage would be like on social media. Because I haven't seen that much outrage. I've seen people, you know, especially on the right, trying to use it as, a, as something to a lightning rod. But people on the left have been, you know, oddly quiet about the whole issue. No one said an absolute thing. But just imagine if Meghan McCain said something like that. God damn it. It says, um, uh, says, while Whoopi has apologized, I've asked her to take time to reflect and learn about the impact of her comments. What's, what's that mean? An entire ABC News organization stands in solidarity with our Jewish colleagues, friends and family and communities. What a weird place to be. Most of those networks I'd imagine are run by people of Jewish descent because they run the entertainment industry in America. But then they're also stuck in that weird work battle where they want to be progressive. They want to have women. They want to have minorities on TV. So you can't be seen to fire a black woman because it looks good, bad for the optics. But she also can't be seen to be on your platform clearly being anti-Semitic and basically saying that your struggle wasn't as bad as hers because it was somehow white on white violence or something. You can't be having that, right? Because then what she's going to say next? Is she going to start saying that? the holocaust wasn't real is she gonna start saying that Anne frank was a figment of our imagination or is a psyop or something how far will it go you can't be having that on your platform but then you also can't fire her because she is essentially you know what is she like the talk show version of flipping oprah god damn it she's looking like a unit though she's definitely enjoyed the pandemic like the rest of us have she's look, looking whoopie's an absolute unit now because she says my words upset so many she says, which is never my intention. I understand why now for that. I'm deeply, deeply grateful because the information I got was really helpful and helped me understand some things. What the information? The information was that if you keep chatting this shit, we're going to take away your, I don't know, what is, how much did you get paid per episode on that show? Maybe 10 grand, uh, 20, 30, 50, 100. You know, when, when, someone when someone threatens your paycheck and your ability to go to your country clubs, you definitely are going to put your... Uh, your uh, anti-Semitic um, hatred to one side. It continues. I misspoke. No, you didn't. Um, the flare-up over Goldsberg remarks this week highlight the enduring and complexity of race-related issues, including the widespread but strongly consent, um, contested notion that only people of colour can be victims of racism, which is absolutely nuts because they say this, right? But then they also say people of colour can't be racist, which is deadly because if you've ever spoken to you know people from central america south america and ask them opinions on their neighbors right neighboring countries what they think of them you'll be in for a very big shock like and they look the same yeah you know? especially if they're naked eye they look exactly the same and they have some very very racist opinions about people that live just a few miles away from them so to think that other people because because they've got a little bit of a tint in their skin tone can't be racist is ridiculous but you know what do i know it says the effect of humility i'm suspending whoopi gobba for two weeks for her wrong and hurtful comments goodwin said the view brought on jonathan greenbelt ceo of anti-defamation league and your fate could happen here on tuesday to discuss why her words have been hurtful jewish people at the moment are feeling besieged said green said green black Blatt, green blatt blatt is it blatt or blatt the only explanation that i have for it is that there's a new definition of racism and that by we've been putting out there for public recently is defined racism sorry we'll say that again the only explanation that i have for um it is that there is a new definition of racism um that has been put out there in the public recently that defined racism exclusively as a targeting of people of color and obviously history teaches us otherwise Everything about Nazi Germany and about the targeting of Jews and about the Holocaust was about race and racism. That's the unfortunate, uh, as, as, what's an unsaleable historic fact. Kenneth L. Marcus, chairman of the Louis D. Brandis Center of Human Rights Under Law, linked to Gorba's remarks to broader misconceptions of the Holocaust, Jewish identity and anti-Semitism. In her era, she was reflecting on the misunderstanding of Jewish identity that is both widespread and dangerous that is sometimes described as erasive um, anti-Semitism. The definition 
definition of anti-Semitism. How many words are saying that on here? Um, it is a notion that the Jews should be viewed only as being white, privileged and oppressors. It defines Jewish identity and involves whitewashing of the Jewish history. Uh, Mark has referred to the use of the anti-Semitic stereotype about being powerful and controlling and sinister <laughs> and coupled with downplaying of denying anti-Semitic. Mate, welcome to our world, do you know what I mean? The amount of flipping watermelon, chicken and running and athletic jokes I've had to kind of field in my day or when people are shocked and appalled that I can't rap and stuff. It's like, come on, man. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, no one can get into what Goldberg said, but I think what she's trying to say is that the Holocaust is about hatred. It's about inhumanity. It's about the, what human beings would do to one another is that that is humane. Imagine if you would have told um, Hitler whilst he was snorting speed and giving her speeches that sometime in the future, people like Wookiee Goldberg would essentially be what trying to explain his hatred in some way, shape or form. Just imagine what he would have thought if you would have told him that like in, 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 in years, you know, in years in the future, there are going to be people, you know, who you clearly would have hated that are going to be out there weirdly defending you or trying to explain away your hatred in some way, shape or form or fighting your court or fighting for you in your corner. Absolutely wild. Which also brought me on to this video that was shared on various parts of social media about this random attack that two Jewish men had to suffer from, where is this? On Holocaust Memorial Day, somewhere in North London, which again, I said to really, it's a community of you know Jewish people that live there. And again, the silence on it in terms of media regarding who the attacker was or the assailant, who clearly was black, is just frightening and goes to show that for whatever reason, people's outrage is very selective. If it happens to one minority group, it's okay. It happens to another minority group, it's the end of the world. It should just be, we should just, it, should, it should just be, like, especially in a pandemic, you would have fought because we've all had to suffer at the hands of this flipping virus, right? We've all had to suffer with these inept governments who had to suffer the elites and the rich and the famous basically telling us what to do and acting as if like they are moral arbiters and living in a gated communities, but asking, telling us, you know, how we should approach going outside and all this misinformation, loads of all this nonsense has been going, manipulation from, you know, scientific bodies, all this nonsense, people extracting money at the stock market, crazy shit, and we're all going to pay for it at the end of the day, right? Cool. You would have thought that would have brought us all together, right? Because you would have thought, okay, cool. We are all being trod on. We are all being treated like less than. These people don't care about us. They view us as, as peons. But instead, it's actually separated us more and more, which is definitely one of the things that's disappointed me the most, I think, of, of the pandemic. I haven't been surprised by the governments basically being unwilling to relinquish control and not allowing people their freedoms or the ability to choose or the ability to say what they want. That's not surprising. But the surprising part about it is that you and I, people like that look like us or that look different or that we're on the same level economically, so, you know, societally, we haven't been able to band around and lock arm in arm and say enough is enough. We've essentially allowed ourselves to be separated even more so because what? We're all scared, really. That's what you see here. It's just scared. You know what I mean? We're all frightened because we look at those people and we think, oh, they're the ones in control. They're the powerful ones. They're the sinister ones. And you just act out. But they're not they're just regular people like you and I trying to live their life, trying to make the best of this crappy situation that we're in. So this video is pretty tragic in that regard. But yeah, this kid in North London decides to just wail on on these two Jewish guys that they're leaving. I guess they're leaving their store, their home. I'm not sure what it is. They're putting the blinders down. And, you know, it's crazy, crazy clip, man. Nothing gets get said by it on the media or he walks past them and he kind of starts wailing on them. Bang, bang, bang. They try and fight back, but, you know, it's not going to work, is it? This kid clearly is 20 to 30 years younger than them. Sprightly, bendy dude hitting them with his bare knuckles. Oh, just terrible. But again, silence from the media. Silence. Because why? The assailant happens to look like me. It wasn't me, I promise, because I'm not that skinny. But it's just horrible. It really, really is horrible. The selective outrage. And again, if that was the other way around, there would not be a, you know, there would not be a pause on this issue. God damn it, man. You actually been to bad boy for doing that. But hey, Whoopi Goldberg got told to sit on the bench. Whoopi Goldberg got told to sit on the bench. Then in other news, which I thought was interesting and funny, this Joe Rogan and Spotify thing is absolutely dumb. In my opinion, really is the dumbest of the dumb. I don't understand any of it. It's all it's a complete overreaction. And again, goes to show how people are so misguided and where their rage should be pointed at. Ghislaine Maxwell essentially got away with murder for the most part. 
We still don't have a flipping um, mug. What's that thing called? A um, police photo of her from the court case. We just have illustrations. There's no black book. There's no exposing all these rich elites who are also involved in this scheme of flying in all these underage girls to an island to do all sorts of madness. None of that's been... Uh, none, no one from the media is putting, putting pressure on you know the judicial system, whoever is in charge, to unravel what actually went on there. Nothing's been going on there. Nothing. Just everyone turning a blind eye, turning a blind eye. Big farmers involvement in the vaccine. Nothing going on there. But let's go and attack the podcaster guy who happens to be a little bit keen when it comes to the alternative medicines regarding COVID. Yes, is it annoying to be a Joe Rogan fan and hear him continually go on and on about the vaccine and about COVID? Yes, it is, because I'm an actual fan of the podcast. I love it for the breadth of the guests that he has on and the interesting conversations they have. And essentially, if you're a fan of Joe Rogan, you could always basically look you can basically see yourself in him when he's talking to really smart people like neil degrasse tyson because he's just like you and i he's dumb doesn't know what he's talking about so to hear him try to intellectually battle or to have a conversation with somebody that's clearly in the three digit number iq is quite interesting to see definitely interesting especially long form interview but during the pandemic he's definitely let covid break his brain which is understandable too, because he's an older guy, um, you know, he's pumped full of HGH and has a tendency to be a little bit fanatical when it comes to working out. So clearly he's trying to, um, he's trying to, he's trying to basically wrangle in his head how he can avoid dying during a pandemic in regards to this virus, because if there's one thing that rich people don't want to do is die because they want to enjoy their wealth, isn't it? What's the point of amassing all that wealth if you can't live a long and fruitful life and enjoy it for as long as possible? So that makes complete sense. But the one thing I think most nuanced, um, rational, uh, fair Joe Rogan fans would say is that he has been swayed or has have a tendency nowadays to basically interview the same type of person, right? Those three scientists that he interviewed back to back were essentially saying the same things, right? In terms of alternative medicines to COVID and alternative approaches and maybe, you know, the numbers are, are fudged and this and that, you know, whatever, right? All that kind of anti-vax kind of talk. They were basically the same type of person. But what he doesn't do is have enough people who want to basically counteract what he's saying in that regards because it's his show he doesn't need to he can do what he wants but it would be nice if you're going to keep talking about covid to have a bit of more of a balanced argument because at the moment it's not balanced but what i've noticed with these people they don't want a balanced argument they just want him to stop talking completely because he dared to have people on they don't agree with which i've never understood because i'm always from the school of thought where if i don't enjoy something i just stop listening to it i stop talking about it because i don't enjoy it anymore case in point being Bert Crash's podcast right weird example to make but for the longest time I actually didn't mind it because I still think oddly enough he's still maybe one of the best interviewers when it comes to talking about the craft and the art of comedy but I don't know how many people actually care about you know the, the background stuff when it comes to stand-up and how you organize your show how you can as a tour the marketing side of things constructing jokes I don't know if people care about it, but I do I think there's some parallels to the DJing world and the performance I don't know there's something I like about it and I think he asked some good questions but over the years he's neuroticism he's just scruffiness and his annoying tendencies came to the front came to the forefront and i just had to stop listening to it i think i mentioned it a few times on the podcast where i kind of just stopped listening because he, he became increasingly annoying and i just pulled away from it and i haven't really mentioned it anymore that especially you know i don't think recently i've mentioned it but i don't go and say that he should be taken off all the platforms because he's a raging alcoholic i don't care that's his life let him live it but people nowadays for whatever reason they want him to not talk completely, Joe, because he doesn't speak to the people they want or because he dared to have people on that they don't want to speak to. And the whole reason why people don't trust mainstream media nowadays is because mostly because of that, because they don't talk to people that they shouldn't be talking to. And the other side of things is that people feel like they're lying. At least with Joe, even if you don't agree with what he's saying and you maybe don't think doing kettlebell swings and taking cold baths is going to prevent you from getting COVID, because imagine that was a bit that annoyed me the most. Well, before he got COVID, he legitimately thought him taking cold baths and going in the steam room and doing kettlebell swings and punching and kicking the heavy bag was preventing him from getting COVID. Then he got COVID and suddenly those same things helped him recover quickly. So whatever, isn't it? Old, old man, boomer, rich man's thing. I get it. But that was annoying for me. But again, I just skipped the, skipped the parts with the COVID on it or I skipped the COVID heavy guest and I just move and wait for the next episode. It's not that difficult, but most people can't do that. I don't know why it is. And the thing with Joe mentioned as well is that, okay, you don't like what he has to say about COVID. Cool, no problem. It's annoying. Cool, no problem. Misinformation, really? Misinformation. 
When you think about what the CDC was saying this entire time during the pandemic, mask up, mask up, wear it, don't wear it. Save it for the nurses, don't save it for the nurses. Cloth mask works, no, they don't work. Two jabs, one jab. Kids need the vaccine now. And dad, kids don't need the vaccine now. They need the vaccine. Boosted this, boosted that. Like, how many times have they gone back and forth on their original statements with no acknowledgement of the thing that they said prior and tried to retcon it like DSP style, as if like they didn't say, as if we don't have record of it be from beforehand. And then you want to say he's misinformation. At least he's trying to learn and speak about these things aloud. Is it annoying? Yes. Is it annoying when he sits there with what's his name? I forgot who he sat there with maybe that Navy SEALs guy and he was like boasting about having a phone full of bookmarks of articles that he reads concerning COVID, like a paranoid boomer, like worry that he's going to drop dead any moment going through. It. And it's supposed to be, that was an expert. That was him being an expert. Like he's the reading that he's done is equivalent to all the years that these doctors and scientists have done, you know, studying virology, which is insane because if you sat next to Joe Rogan and told him, Hey, I've been watching the UFC for 20 plus years or MMA for 20 plus years. That makes me an expert on the sport. And I can also beat people up even without being in the gym. He'd laugh at you. I mean, he'd laugh you out of the room because until you get punched in the face, you don't know what it is to be involved in the fight clearly. But for whatever reason, these anti-vax people feel like if they read articles, they've suddenly got the knowledge. Again, who cares? We're going to a deep rabbit hole. But essentially, it's all hysteria for nothing. It doesn't really make any sense. Obviously, he had to go on, you know, on his Instagram and try and explain it away. And again, I didn't really mind the, the video. I don't think he sold out or he was trying to um, save face. I think if anything, you know, when you get given $100 million plus, especially if you listen to the people in the comedy scene, a lot of them say it's north of $100 million, maybe in the high 200s. If that's true, crazy, especially because it's only being licensed to Spotify. It's not even like they got the IP. He can leave after, I think it's six or seven years, I think the contract is. So clearly it's a it's a win-win for him in that regard. But if you get $100 million from a corporation, it's not as if you can just do whatever you want. Even Joe Rogan can't. And he's got legitimate fuck you money. And even he's been having, he's having to be um, pulled in and reined in a little bit. Not muzzled, but I think reined in a bit. Like, hey, relax, this and that. And now to the extent now, you know, he came out with a statement basically saying, hey, I'm going to try my best to get more people on who have opposing views to mine. I'm just trying to learn and explore things openly. Um, you know, as everyone else is, I don't want to just speak to some group, some group of people, even though everyone who spoke to recently has kind of, you know, echoed the kind of anti-vax sentiment he's, he's kind of been running with. But cool, whatever, that's completely fine. But the reaction to it has been so nutty. Look at this article from The Guardian. Should Spotify ban Joe Rogan? For what? Because he dared to speak about um, alternative medicines. Because he wants to take flipping ivermectin. Who cares? Like, really? Rich rich boomer guy shit. Like, these guys are the ones that go to Vegas for their comedy tours. And I think it's Dave Chappelle or whatever it may be. They book rooms where they all plug themselves into IVs. So that they, they can recover from a night of drinking and, you know, smashing whores and whatnot. These guys aren't normal. That's what rich men do. Do you know what I mean? They, they want to somehow, um, um, you know, they want to somehow live forever, even though they're not going to live forever or are under the illusion that all these things are actually benefiting them or allowing them the ability to get on it more. It makes complete sense that he would be a little bit, you know, COVID skeptical. Of course he would be. Why wouldn't he be? He's got the ability and the funds to be skeptical. Me and you don't. We have to go back to work. We have to go and visit our family. We have to live a normal life. So we don't have the ability to be COVID skeptical. He does. So let, let him be. This is really ridiculous. So let's read some of what they said. This is from uh, someone called Cass Mood, uh, Moody or Maddie. Joe Rogan is a symptom. Joe Rogan isn't a far-right ideologue pushing a consistent political agenda. Rather, he's he's a grifter. Aren't you a grifter too, you absolute dullard? I wouldn't know who you were unless you were talking about him. Sometimes these people are just annoying. If you don't like him, don't listen to the show. If you don't like the show, make your own one. It's just like, it's not that hard. Um, it really isn't. I don't understand any of this. It just doesn't make any sense. If anything as well, doesn't this make people want to listen to him more? It's like the Alex Jones effect. He hasn't exactly disappeared, has he, since they took him off every flipping platform. He's essentially still got his hardcore fan base who essentially pay for his life because now they look at him as like, oh no, you are definitely the bastion of truth now because they tried to muzzle you. It's like it doesn't have the effect that they want it to have. It says here, um, he is a grifter who hides behind excuses like curiosity, entertainment, freedom, and neutrality to push whatever controversy that sells. Now that controversy is hurting Spotify's bottom line, which is why they have pushed him to publicly apologize. So somehow it's bad to be curious. It's bad to want to provide entertainment. It's bad to levy for freedom. And it's bad to be neutral on issues that you are not that well versed in or issues that are maybe a bit complex. 
God almighty. Obviously, that will not end with this information on this show, on Spotify or many other platforms like YouTube. Um, Joe Rogan is not the problem. He's a symptom. The symptom of the society in which pandering to the mostly right wing, but centrally, so what, what's it? But certainly anti-left minority can be a highly profitable. Um, just like the current Republican Party, they live off liberal outrage rather than any consistent political message. Why don't you try then? That's the thing I don't understand. Let's say it is a grift. Why don't they try the grift? Why don't they attempt... That's the thing that they don't have. They don't have the... The people on the left don't seem to have the messaging that the people on the right seem to have. We had it with Brexit. There was such a clear, coherent message when it came to Brexit. Again, when it when Brexit was pushed through, that message and those promises were thrown out the window. So it definitely got sold a lie. But there was definitely a clear message as to what the pros were with Brexit. With the, uh, the stay in the EU, a lot of people, what was the clear and consistent message behind that? What was it? how could that resonate with the regular working class person especially people that, that don't live in london how could they resonate with that how could they connect with it how would it benefit them how would it kind of allow them to maybe um dream of a better future for themselves and their children none it doesn't exist so they complain about the grift but they don't try and d enter into the grift play the game and it, it's like uh, the equivalent of what these um new christian churches are doing now these cool ones where the preachers wear yeezys and they put jeans on and they have cool haircuts that's the only way you're going to connect with the youth you're going to have to be on TikTok. You're going to have to be on Instagram. You can't just be stuffy and be like, you know, our dad's generation of people who are still kind of are very rigid in the way that they go to church and how they do things. No, you have to kind of be a bit loose, be a bit fun, you know, to go on Instagram live a couple of times, say some rap lyrics and maybe hold your mouth over the curse word, play the game. It continues. This is not to minimize the problem. In fact, this is a problem much bigger than disinformation spreading, grifting with millions of listeners. The real problem is not the supply of disinformation, but the demand for it. So, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna are you gonna force us not to listen to to Joe Rogan? Are you gonna come to our house and put in fucking earplugs into our ears? Are you going to arrest us for listening to him? Is that what you're gonna do? Hmm, that sounds a bit totalitarian, don't you think? Um, as long as there is a mass demand, you can either ban or boycott your way to disinformation. Oh, absolutely nonsense. No person here bash what's the thing what's that person called bashkar shankar this is an attempt to censor rogan yes people are trying to censor rogan i know many in liberal circles would counter that by state um the or state can censor therefore duh, duh, duh. america's most polarizing podcaster can be anything of sort don't know that we've seen enough examples throughout history to censorship not involving the state think of the protest in universal studio at the last temptation of christ in 1988 or the more dramatic book burnings of the boycotts of the 20th century the question then is whether censorship is ever just a, okay you're just bad word salad another one person here imran ahmed says repel section 230 of the communication decency act in the pandemic the misinformation uh per pernicious effect is to offer false hope to the anxious to dissuade people from following guidance from public health professionals and to make people hesitate before taking vaccine that has saved millions of lives look i've been double jabbed not getting a boost i'm not playing that game leave me alone you told me i could live my life with a double jab i've got it i've got a covid pass let me live my life but let's let's make this clear if you are taking your medical advice from a fucking podcaster you probably you probably deserve whatever consequence you're going to get legitimately like let's be let's be real if you're a grown-up and you're really taking your medical advice from a podcaster and he's making you doubt whether or not you should order ivermectin for flipping amazon and get that instead of getting jabbed up if you're 60 years old and you can't walk outside your house without flipping assistance without being on a scooter you might deserve everything that comes at you you really do you can't blame that guy he's rich bruv he's been rich for the most of his adult life he's been a multi-millionaire able to do what he wants living in la access to all the best like the best scientists and health professionals run to his podcast to basically talk about their new advances and things that they're looking into they run they sprint over to him he's a health fanatic he's been a long he's been a lifelong martial artist somebody has committed his life to basically be for the most part sober right for the most part working out his base level is much higher than most people why would you take his advice from it why would you take his advice it's like following a flipping um victoria's secret model and getting her advice on how you can balance working a nine to five and also working out she doesn't work a flipping nine to five she gets paid to look hot of course she's going to look amazing of course because she's paid to look hot and she has nannies looking after her kids that makes complete sense you can't take her advice on everyday life it doesn't make any sense so if you're taking ivermectin help from joe rogan you deserve everything you're getting really do but if he wants to offer it let him offer it it's a free market you can buy an Android or you can buy an iPhone. What do you want to do? Oh, you're an idiot if you buy an Android. Probably are. Who wants a green bubble? But let people choose. 
what is this? It continues. Right now, as you read this, there are people um, gasping for air. <laughs> I see Hughes because they heard misinformation online and heard it on a podcast like Rogan Broadcast of Millions. If you are on a if you are on a flipping ICU, right? And you're gasping for air. And the last thing you heard was Joe Rogan's voice telling you to buy ivermectin. It is what it is. Close your eyes and and welcome your maker, mate. Honestly, if that was if that was the reason why you're on that on that bed, it is what it is. The game is the game. You try to play it, you got burned. Whatever. This idea that we're gonna go through the entire pandemic with you know no casualties and everyone's gonna be hunky dory. Some people have reacted negatively to the vaccine. Did they report about that? There's that story of that girl being covered with all these bumps and scars and shit. The things that people don't talk about that. Or people going in, you know, having lung issues and whatnot, and maybe not breathing correctly after the fact. These complications happen, but for the most part, what we've seen from information we have available masks especially if you have an n95 uh, the ability to maybe wipe down your stuff and maybe use antiseptic cream whatever it may be antibacterial whatever blah 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 um the ability to have a vaccine all these things are the best tr chance that we have to combat this virus and there's no denying we've got here at the moment because the majority of the population around the world especially in western countries have decided the vaccine is the best way forward yes there's a small minority of people who want to go the opposite way cool but this idea that we're going to get 100% adoption rate is absolutely nuts. Who, who thought this? Who thought this is ever going to happen? Especially with the internet. There's too much information out there. There's too many people offering alternative points of view for us to, for you to feel as if like everyone's going to have exactly the same POV. They're not going to have that. It doesn't make any sense. It's not realistic. So this is inevitable to happen. But, you know, maybe I'm talking on my ass. Um, and then, yeah, whatever. More people talking rubbish there. And then, of course, people come out and want to correct your organs talk about coronavirus stories 24 hours of the apology day nitpicking and going into it another article here comes to the bbc saying four claims check for fact checking have you when's the last time you've seen uh, any news you know website or platform dedicated page to fact checking the claims of politicians when have you heard that? When does that happen, really? They never do that. But now they want to do it to a podcaster. They want to fact check him, right? And of course, one claim here. Yeah, the claims are quite funny, though. A vaccine can alter your genes. Another claim, I have a vaccine can cure COVID. Another claim, if you get vaccinated after having COVID, you're at greater risk of harmful side effects. You just read these headlines and you don't need to listen. You could either listen if you're curious, just for the sake of it, or you could just skip ahead like everyone else does. Just press that five or 15 minute button and just keep it moving. Or 15 seconds, I think, button. Another person, claim for young people, the health risk for the vaccine are greater than COVID. That is obviously to be argued. Who knows? And then if we want to make you laugh even more, we've got this Toblerone guy, flipping Brian Stelter from flipping CNN, um, complaining about Americans trusting Rogan over his own network. So instead of getting into the flipping um coliseum and battling rogan in a battle of ideas he's there on his flipping um chair where he's flipping legs on touch the floor with his little toblerone head or his little malteser head arguing for or moaning or crying that people aren't listening to him as opposed to listen to rogan like what are you talking about what are you talking about and then of course to make it even more sweeter one of the people that was spearheading the campaign against, oh, Rogan spreading different information. I'm not going to be on your platform anymore if you have him on there. Neil Young decided to make a, you know, a bit of a moral stand in terms of I don't agree with Joe Rogan's points of view. So I'm going to take my content off of Spotify and put it on another platform because I don't agree with what he's saying. But look where he decided to go. Curtis Wall Street Journal. Neil Young pushes Amazon Music to fans after pulling content from Spotify amid Joe Rogan controversy. Are they taking us for mugs? follow the money so all of this posturing all this moral grandstanding you go and stand next to mr jeff bezos that's your solution to this you think spotify is so bad or what you're going to say so bad that you're willing to stand next to flipping jeff bezos on amazon huh oh yeah 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 everyone's full of shit everyone's full of shit again i wish we could all be grown-ups and just listen to the things we want to listen to if we don't like something we just ignore it like most people do but people don't do that people are just too sensitive they want everything to be policed the way they want it and to look a certain way i don't necessarily understand why it's like that it just is one of those unfortunate events or features of the modern world that we live in it's flipping frustrating but god damn it man grow the hell up everybody please enough is enough so what he speaks to people that want to take ivermectin instead of getting a vaccine why does it matter why does it honestly matter why it really doesn't matter 
for the most part, we all know what the sensible advice is. Follow the science, follow the doctors, independent ones. There's many on YouTube. There's many on podcast platforms that you can speak to and get you know alternative points of view. The information is readily available. If you cannot deduce or figure out how to do it, there's no hope for you. What more do you need? What more do you need? You want someone to hold your hand the entire way through? We have all the information out there. Make an informed decision, especially for your own family. If you decide not to get advice, cool, whatever. I, I've decided where my line ends. My line ends at booster. Now nah, I'm not doing it anymore. You told me if I get the two jabs and I have my vaccine passport, which already is an invasion of my privacy and, you know, is arts. It kind of breaks every single, loads of ideas I have in my head about how I want to navigate around the world. But I did it because the benefits far outweigh the negatives in terms of me being able to move around and do the things I want to do. Now you want me to do the booster. And now we're at a point where supposedly on my COVID pass, it says that it's going to expire on the 22nd. And there's this rumor going around that allegedly, if you don't get the booster, they're not gonna be able to, you're not going to be able to renew your COVID pass. Now they put me in a predicament. What am I going to do? Am I going to be one of those guys that buys a fake um, pass online because I don't want to do the booster thing, which is obviously more harm than good in that respect? Or am I going to then acquiesce and bend the knee and get the booster just so I can live my everyday life? It's all a joke thing. But again, I made the informed decision. I decided to move on and that's it. I'm not complaining about money. I'm just growing up and moving on with it. That's all it may be. And again, it's Spotify. If you don't like it, you close the app down. You go on something else. You maybe skip his episode, you unsubscribe, whatever it may be. What is this? This is absolute nonsense. Absolute nonsense. If anything, this is why they signed him up on the platform in the first place. It's what if I didn't pay those millions just to get him on there to speak to flipping Ari Shafir every week. They put him on there so he could, you know, generate some debate, you know, maybe go a bit viral from time to time. This is good for business. This is good for business. If they really wanted this guy to stop podcasting, they just stop listening to him. But they don't. They don't know how to... Uh, I don't know, man. These people are insane. They're nuts. They're nuts in the head. They don't provide a coherent or a convincing enough counter argument, but then they want you to stop listening to it completely. It's not even like they're saying, okay, listen to this person instead because they're correct. This guy's talking out of his ass. No, you should not listen to him at all. We're going to come to your house or we're going to come, you know, to your house flipping Chinese style, right? Chinese government style. And we're going to weld you into your house like they did in the early parts of the pandemic. Or we're going to come with people with hazmat suits and forcibly put you in flipping, um, you know, vans and spray you down and inject you with the, with the vaccine when you, whether you know you want it or not. Like, come on, man. Everyone needs to relax. Everyone needs to relax. But, you know, they probably won't because we're all just flipping crazy and going nuts and whatnot. But I've had enough, man. Please. Let's stop with all of this nonsense. Let's stop with all of this nonsense. Uh, next on the list here, we have... What else here? Well, yeah, we have these... Um, oh, I must be the only person because I think people are just addicted to hype. But clearly, clearly these um, cactus plant fly, sorry, cactus plant flea market Nike Dunk Lows are horrendous, right? But they look, you know, they look horrendous, they look okay. They kind of remind me a little bit of the Mars Yard. Um, you know, obviously the ones that Tom Sachs, Tom Sachs designed. But in terms of being objective, they're pretty butters, isn't it? But for whatever reason, I can still picture the likes of ASAP Bari wearing this with some terrible, you know, mismatched Armani, whatever, capital outfit with loads of diamantes all over the place, right? I could definitely see people like that wearing this sort of stuff because it kind of calls for that kind of outfit with the tears all over your jeans and whatnot. But these look terrible, like convincingly pretty terrible. The only thing I could say that's probably a good thing is that at least cactus plant flea market when they do do collaborations with nike they tend to kind of push the boundaries a little bit they don't play it safe and just change the colorway it's always a different kind of application um a different type of approach to the thing different color different approach it's just interesting to look at but in terms of being objective these look pretty terrible i gotta say they really really look terrible um it says they leave the cactus plant flea market to always push the envelope when it comes to working on footwear from decking out the dunk clothes to the up tempos inspired air force ones the brand is fearless when it comes to producing polarizing sneakers agreed um cynthia liu who's i think the yeah the founder of the label uh cynthia liu or cynthia liu um reno renovates the classic silhouettes with earthy elements and a plethora of details base layer of the base layer are bereft of the usual smooth leather uppers and instead of modified triangular shaped quilting on a beige hue santone tan you know i'm not reading the color code of it. you know what it looks like i hate these sneaker pictures though on your toes with the pin rolls so shock sewing i'm just glad they haven't got weed socks on these shits or, or any sort of ayahuasca socks or something but sneaker photography is so crap legitimately lame it's one of the worst things about streetwear honestly the photography involved in sneaker culture is just terrible all these little 
little toe up things the socks showing like hey, relax be more interesting please a little bit more, some cooler poses something give us something different i'll take these flat ones over this toe up any day of the week this looks like something some instagram baddie would do to make their leg look longer but it doesn't ever do that like just allow it the picture's always terrible in it but again these these little companies are interesting too in it these little chinese places where they essentially leak all these pictures of these shoes ahead of time because usually they get sent them ahead of time so that they can make fakes that's basically the long and short of it that that um black market I, hopefully someone will uncover it because the level of accuracy you could get from rep shoes nowadays is so scary that it leads me to believe that there's definitely some um weird deal that they have in place with these brands where they basically get these samples early so that they can make them and then sell them to customers and whatnot and you know they can basically double dip because they get the ability to sell them to legit stores and they get the ability to sell them to rep places who pay a high premium they then disseminate to all the shops because they all get the same reps apart from maybe a few everyone gets the same reps apart from maybe per, look, perfect shoes or pk right but everyone gets the same level of reps um i'm sure it's maybe some one group who then basically gives them to all these different factories and then they go from there or they basically get the base or they get maybe the template or whatever it may be right and then they or the tooling and then they basically be able to make it off their own back maybe add some details here and there but there's definitely something underhand going on there but yeah for me they look absolutely garbage again i I, I'm sure we're going to see all those um, ripped jean wearing guys, you know, Bari leading the revolution, wearing these things, making them look absolutely terrible. Then they're what they are. Then we're going to see some really tiny fashion girl wearing them. Everyone's going to be like, oh, they look really cool. But the girl's four foot two in real life. So anything she wears is going to look great. And for the most people, they're going to look absolutely terrible. But at least they try and do something interesting. At least doesn't look at anything else that resisted on the market. I like the idea that they've got that one swoosh on the left foot. That's pretty cool. Um, yeah, cool, whatever. But yeah, I'm I'm not a fan. I think they look complete garbage, and they're probably gonna just go and sell loads because of the hype, and that's really about it. We got this story courtesy of Hype Beast again, featuring the artist. How do you pronounce the name? Is it Likili? Li Kelly four seven is now the face of Heidi Semaine Celine, which is interesting because you never see black people photograph um you know walking the runway of celine shows who are non-indie alternative looking most of the kids that walk the show um or for celine are either tiktok kids or kids who clearly are up you know come from that alternative indie scene band that Halle main seems to be still obsessed with which i have to give him ratings for i know people hate it about him and want him to evolve but i like the fact that he's got a very specific taste and specific kind of point of view when it comes to men's fashion he likes them to look wafy he wants to look like they're on heroin he wants them to look like they've just had a cucumber for lunch and that's about it nothing else can exist outside of that realm and it's quite hard to have gunner walk in that runway show because he doesn't look like he spends his money on flipping smack he might look like he spends his money on happy meals but definitely not smack so it's definitely interesting to see him deciding to kind of pivot into this world whether or not this is just him trying to be woke and trying to connect to that side of things or if this is a ge actual genuine connection which will also be cool because again i'm not really too familiar with um le kelly 47 so maybe this is something that he's generally interested in and maybe saw her play somewhere a live show or somebody played it in a studio whilst they're you know making something and he maybe said oh who's that but it's pretty cool to see a quick little interview here because you have hype beast it says um how did the project with heisman mean come about had you been in contact before he said he's uh people reached out and the rest was history it was a first time meeting um were you aware of his domains it's a collaborator with him it said both myself and my debit card call uh one word answers in it i don't i don't care to analyze whatever the reason may grant them peace um was the other question says here you've been on a rapid rise did the lockdowns uh, slow that down for you did it change your outlook of your career nothing can slow me down but me i'm still on my path to steady um, learning and having fun if anything my desire and intentions are more pronounced i know who i am and i know exactly what i want what's next for you in 2022 said with a bank how are you going to end it with a bank okay fucking hell direct and not really that fun in it but yeah great great shots i think they look cool um obviously got the celine tracksuit on and definitely got a bit of celine fur definitely not fake fur so heady Slamane doesn't play with that if you're gonna put on fur if you're gonna wear leather it's gonna be real when it comes to heady Slamane. but yeah i thought that was pretty cool to see in that regard so yeah definitely good to see heady deciding to kind of be tapped in with what's going on that day in the scene definitely um i definitely back that one and i think that's where we're gonna end it we're already now in. So yeah, that's been the Extra Music Show episode number 549. Thanks again for tuning in as per usual. It's been a pleasure to have your company. If you listen to the show via YouTube and you liked what you heard, smack like, 
leave a subscribe or maybe you know leave a subscribe click subscribe so you can see more videos regarding this channel if you listen via the podcast app of course leave me a five star review there's a way to do that on spotify now at the moment so if you haven't already please leave me a review on the spotify app that'd be greatly appreciated if you can't see it don't worry keep it moving and the patient episode is already out already if you listen to us right now if not i'll see you guys again very soon if you listen via the audio podcast you hear a song if you're watching it via video it'll just end here for now take care peace